Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Lockup. I don't remember what episode number this is. I really don't care. 17. It's all right. It's 17. 17. 17 episodes deep, man. 17, 17 episodes, yeah. Yeah. Seems like, you know, whatever. Okay, so uh, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside Brian Adams here. And uh, trying to be more enthusiastic now. More so on the lock, or excuse me, the spinner act, but, more, but you know, hey, it starts on the lockup. It's got to start somewhere. Right, it's got to start. Gotta we start bring somewhere. the energy here, and then we finish strong. What? It's not sex, man. No, it's not. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, like, a, it's like a game, man. You got to play hard and stay hard. Man, this is just terrible analogies. I'm just going to stop right now. So. <laughs> Please do. All right. Uh, uh, Wizard World, Chicago. Was uh, it, today is the last day. Um, it was started Thursday. I want to go ahead and say, you know, obviously you're listening to this a day early because of what our subject matter is for later on in the show. But so you're welcome. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. So Wizard World today is the last day. Uh, WWE superstars were uh, in attendance for Wizard this weekend. Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton were there Thursday. Page and The Undertaker were there Friday and yesterday. Sting. Hell the, of a lineup. The Stinger. That it, That is a good lineup. Hell man. of a lineup. That's a good lineup. Uh, everybody was doing photo ops and uh, autographs. The only one that, that was doing an autograph, but there was a catch to it, was, of course, The Undertaker. Um, you can pay for photo ops all day. The only way you can get the autograph from The Undertaker was if you were to actually purchase a Undertaker VIP pass for the weekend. Which ran a little over two hundred bucks, but it was entrance into the convention. It was the photo op with him. It was the um, the autograph, and I believe it was a photo and autograph with Paige as well. Nice. So not not. So they kind of packaged it well. Yeah, yeah. You're getting, you're getting more bang for your buck than just an Undertaker signature. Pretty much, but I mean, how elusive is the Undertaker anyway? Hmm. At this point, you're like, dude, I, I if I had it, I would have done it. Yeah, at, at this point, if you're not running out there and trying to get... I, I really feel like in the next year or so, you probably won't see him at all. Yes, he's to be very, 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 you know... He's like one of those one of those superstars that doesn't hit the con circuit very often. Right. Not that I'm, like, fully aware of that, but it, from what I've seen, he doesn't yeah. seem to be there as often as, like, you know... Well, hopefully this year was a start to something in his mind where he's like, you know what, this is pretty fun, I think I'll do it again next year. Because then we'll totally be prepared. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the reason we bring this up is because during the panel that Daniel Bryan was a part of on Thursday, I don't remember if it was a Chicago Sun-Times or the Chicago Tribune, but, uh, they quoted Daniel Bryan in saying how he was with his health and his return to the ring and everything. So he said he saw a, uh, a neurologist that was hired by the NFL. Uh, he was the Super Bowl neurologist and he cleared Daniel Bryan. Um, he said he was cleared to return. Now, he wanted to stress that the neurologist did not work for the NFL. It was just a special neurologist brought in for the Super Bowl. So, he says he's, according to this neurologist, he's ready to go. He's cleared to wrestle. Now, the WWE doesn't see it that way. Whether it's them holding him back, maybe because of storyline purposes, or maybe because they feel, hey, your health... Uh, we don't believe it's there because our doctors didn't say it. Who knows what it yeah, is? Yeah, that's what I'd actually write online is that he hadn't been uh, given approval by official WWE right. physicians and to return. at the end of the day, they're the ones that count. Yeah. Like, you could have every doctor in the world. Yeah, they're the, they're okay, the ones but... signing, your, signing this paycheck, so until they say. Yeah, exactly. So who knows what this might lead to? It, it might lead to them just saying, you know what? Kind of in the case of Dolph Ziggler, where I read, uh, I heard on another podcast that he's one concussion away from, you know, never wrestling again, possibly. So I could see them looking at Daniel Bryan's situation in almost similar fashion. You know, like, you know what? Instead, let's just have you as an ambassador or something like that. Like, is it worth putting him in the ring one more time? In my opinion, if you're not going to give him the final push that he was supposed to get, that he started at WrestleMania 30. Right. You know, because that was a great build. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. If, if you're not going to go back to that then it's not worth it. You know, I like how he tried, again, when he came back after that, just to be squashed again yeah. and taken out. So you got to put him on that path. If you're not putting him on that path, don't even do it because you're wasting the talent. 
Yeah, it's it's if he's not going to be back in the picture for the, the the heavyweight championship, then there's not there's not any point. I don't think. Um, he was also asked uh, about CM Punk and how he felt when he quit WWE. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and to his dismay, he says he's fifty fifty on it. He says he understands Punk's uh, Punk's position, but at the same time, he he he's sad that Punk left because he had envisioned a great. Uh, a series of matches with Punk that would cultivate at WrestleMania in the way he compared it to this generation's Brett versus Sean in terms of in-ring stuff, not behind-the-scenes stuff. And he said he was really looking forward to working with Punk and headlining at WrestleMania in that, feature, in, in that sense. I think that could have been really cool because, you know what, Phil Brooks the guy, whatever, but CM Punk the wrestler, very technical, very sound, very good at what he did. That would have been an excellent series of matches as a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that exactly. would have been great to see. No, I, that, that's what I'm saying. I totally agree. Um, moving on, your girl, Eva Marie, was <laughs> my girl was recently booed horribly out of a set of NXT tapings. Um, she botched a pinfall. Uh, she was supposed to kick out. She didn't. The ref knew she was supposed to kick out, so the fans saw the the, the, the apparent botch and they gave her hell about it. And she still ended up winning the match, but they just they booed her. Was this was this a match that's made NXT TV yet? No, not yet. So it'll probably be edited out. Oh, who knows how they're gonna do that? But uh, she she screwed this up really really bad, and the fans caught it right away, and they just they booed her. I mean, so relentlessly. Yeah, I I know I don't like bringing her up week after week after week, but that's someone that my opinion I don't know what WWE is doing with her. I don't know what they're thinking, but she's just not what they thought. Whatever they see in her, whatever they think they have, she does not have it. I actually feel kind of the same, but at the same time, no. I feel that they see something in her that they are working and bringing out, which I feel she can bring out. The problem is she was thrust into the spotlight way too early. I agree with that. And because of that, they feel that they need to cash in on this investment now sooner than later. And that's where it's biting them in the ass because they're going too quick with this. They should give her way more time to develop. You know, Brian Kendrick is doing a great job training her. And I watched that match uh, last week, the debut match that you were talking about. It wasn't as bad as you made it seem. Oh, man, I, it wasn't good. It, it wasn't, it wasn't good, great. Though. It wasn't great. I'll give it that. But I mean, it definitely can be, uh, it's definitely, it definitely needs work. Lots of work. But it's, it's there. I see what. I see talent there. The thing is, it's she's too, she's still too stiff, mm-hmm. you know, um, and her timing needs a little work. She's too stiff, and she required too much assistance. Yes. To pull off the moves. Yes. Um, you but know see, that man, all comes in time. The more you go, the more you do. At, but like I said, that's the WWE. At her part, age, not though, hers. I mean, how long can they expect to get out of her? You never she's know. She's already thirty. Depends she on, might be 31. I'm not exactly sure when her birthday, but I know she's in her 30s. Depends on how well you take care of yourself. You know, it's, it's and with when you have, this is what I don't understand, is when you have talent like Sasha Banks, like Becky Lynch, like Paige, like, you know, I could go on. Right. Why bother with her? I think she's going to be the ultimate diva heel. She can be. Yeah. How long is it going to take to cultivate here, that wrestling let, skill, let, though? Here, here, here. How about this? How about this? What if... All of this is a ruse to get the fans to just hate her guts beyond all belief. That's that's giving that's giving Vince and the powers that be way more see but way remember, more credit no, 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 than no, no, I believe no. they have. NXT is Triple H, and right now Triple H is on a roll with what he's doing. I'll give you that. It's it goes back to my New Day theory, which is a fantastic theory that they tried to push them over so hard that they. They end start up being heels. Yeah. Oh, it's, Even though they don't see themselves as heels. I agree with that a hundred percent. You know, so I'm thinking maybe it's something similar, but with Eva Marie. Yeah. The, the only problem with Eva Marie is she doesn't have the the in ring capabilities that New Day does. Very true. Well, New Day's been at it a lot longer than she has. So that's that's true too. I mean, it's I agree with you. You, you gotta now you're making me feel slightly sympathetic towards her. Because she was thrust into a situation that she really didn't know wasn't. First of all, she didn't have the skills, and secondly, man, they just went hard at it. I mean, and they obviously see something in her, 
Because why waste TV time with her? I don't know what it is because I'm going to tell you this right now. Vince they, doesn't like to give away money. When they get her on the mic, she doesn't even like have the skills to... Like, that first time she came out of NXT and she got that hard boo from the crowd, like, you could see it in her eyes that she was just, like, just a, so close to just bursting into tears. That's something she's going to have to get used to. And use she's got to thicken the skin up. Use that as an advantage, yeah. you know, to go ahead and further the strength of her char- the character's personality. Like, hopefully they're telling her behind the scenes, okay, they don't like you, we're going to go heal with you. Right. Accept it. Embrace it. Yeah, there, yeah, there you go. You there know, you go. much like uh, Naomi had to do Trinity, mm-hmm. whatever. I, I told he was getting me confused. Right. It's Naomi. It's, it's she's Naomi, the right? The better Her one name out of the Trin- Funkadactyls. Yeah, the better Funkadactyl. Yeah. Um, I believe she wrestles by Naomi. I think Trinity's her real name. Yeah, Trinity. But real uh, name. you know, from watching her on Told Divas, she wasn't really into being a heel. Right. You know, it was kind of against her personality. But obviously, she's embraced it because she does it well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, finally, our last bit of business before we get to the main stuff. Uh, your boy, Finn Balor. Uh, is there a Balor club in the works? Now, I don't know if you watch New Japan Pro Wrestling, but they have what's called the Bullet Club, which is an equivalent. It's where, basically, uh, the NWO idea came from originally. Uh-huh. Um, I believe. Uh, well, it's similar, but people have started where started to wear Bullet Club T-shirts at NXT tapings, and now they're starting to wear Balor Club T-shirts. So, in an interview, Finn Balor was asked, "Well, Balor Club, well, you know, is this something that's going to be official? Is this just a fit? What's going on?" Well, Finn Balor replies, "I have a lot of ideas. I've got people who I wouldn't mind working with, um, and I've got pen to paper. It just depends on how it plays out backstage." Um, so you might see something. He's like, because I have, you know, like I said, I've got people that I want to work with very closely. Um, so there might be a stable coming, the Balor Club stable. Um, now, two names that are getting thrown around to be included in this possible stable, be- only due to the fact that uh, Finn Balor's, an- mo- his main answer to both the questions were, keep watching this space. We'll see what happens. Uh, Johnny Gargiano and Tommaso uh, Ciampa. Or Siampa, I don't know how to pronounce his last I, name. C i a m p. Two, they just debuted. Okay. You know, or at the last set of TV tapings. Right, right. So there's supposed to be some really big guys in terms of popularity on the indie scene, mm-hmm. uh, and they're making their way to NXT. So there's a possibility people are asking, like, well, what about these two guys? And Finn's response was, "Watch this space." So uh, interesting that uh, Balor might start a stable. No, absolutely. Whereas we know most stables start out as heels. Yeah. So you figure Ayo hey, Tommy comes back, he's gonna want to go after Balor. What if one of the, one of them's got to be the heel? And I don't see it being Hideo. Maybe they do a storyline where Finn Balor's demon side takes over, or Hideo comes back and he says, you know, like Kevin Owens and and, and Finn Balor maybe cutting a promo, and Hideo comes out and he says, you know what, Kevin, it wasn't you. I'm going to tell the truth. And he points to Finn Balor and he tells Balor, it was you who took me out. You know, because wasn't Hideo in line against Kevin Owens? I believe so. And then all of a sudden Hideo gets sidelined. So Finn, they had that number one contenders stuff and Finn Balor got the spot. So what if Hideo comes out and he points at Finn Balor and says, you're the you're the guy who injured me. And then Finn Balor's like, it was the deep, the dark side took over, you know, this and this and that. And they, they give Balor, they make Balor a heel. And they hype up Hideo as a, a a face, and then that's when Balor brings in the Balor Club. I guess that could work. I mean, kind of think... hard to call yourself a demon and be a face. <sighs> well, you know, Gene Simmons has done it for a long time. Yeah, but nobody likes Gene Simmons. No, no one, no, no one likes Gene Simmons. I, I wonder some days if Gene Simmons even likes Gene Simmons. Yeah, you know, um, there was on a side note. Um, I don't know if you saw the Facebook post I put up last night. There was a fan in attendance at NXT TakeOver with a sign in the audience. Um, I don't even know if I should say it on here. It was a chick, okay? She's got this big sign, and it said, Face f*** me, Finn. <laughs> yep. Oh, Jesus, Dude, man. It, the, the best thing about the photo, it was, for what? It's a legit sign. It was an, She had the most stone-cold-looking face on her, but the people around there, there's people looking up at her sign. There was this one dude looking directly at the camera 
for whoever took the the shot, dude. His face was priceless. He's you know he's got one of those. Nice. You know it was just it was, it was funny as hell. Um. So anyways, moving on. Uh, NXT Takeover was last night. Yeah. NXT Takeover Brooklyn. Um. I started making uh, notes for the show, and as my notes started to turn into a monster. <laughs> That, and I noticed that I was starting to just pretty much review every match as they were going. So I'm watching it on my phone as I've got the computer right here. So everything that happened, I'm like like typing real time. So I ended up putting that on the site for later. But uh, we'll go through the show. We'll run it down here. Uh, so the show starts off with Triple H opening the show and announcing that uh, this, starting in December, NXT will be overseas in the UK. What do you think about that? I, that's, you know, that's big for... For people in the United Kingdom, I mean, yeah. uh, that it shows that obviously they have a little more faith in the company now. They're willing to take it on the road, right? Take it overseas. Obviously, the fan base is building, and that's to be expected. I mean, watching his watching him give that little speech before takeover last night, I got hit with the thought of like, man, what if like this becomes so big that instead of it being the breeding ground for new talent for WWE. What if it just becomes its own thing? It is. Like, what if something happens and Stephanie and Triple H end up leaving the company and by some happenstance take NXT with them? Mm. Well, technically now, NXT is the third brand. It's Raw, SmackDown, NXT. Um, and it's still considered a breeding ground, but more so the performance center itself is more the breeding ground now. And if you've, uh, I don't know how close you've had your ear to the ground, Triple H and WWE have been very buddy-buddy with a lot of independent companies now. Ring of Honor, Evolve, um, there's another one I can't remember, but they're like sitting there, and you know, if you go, if you're an independent wrestler at whatever show you're at, or whatever promotion you're at, and you look out that curtain, and you see William Regal sitting there, you know he's sitting there for a reason. He's not sitting there because he wants to enjoy the show. He's scouting. Yeah, totally. So for them to sit there and put William Regal or any of their other agents front row, scout these guys out, there's there's something there. Um, and I think WWE would benefit more by actually using a lot of these people, using the independents now as breeding grounds, and then using them, okay, you're being brought up to NXT. Look at NXT as a promotion, you know, be, getting a promotion, not a promotion, but getting a promotion as opposed to being a developmental territory. You know, that's how I see it. But congrats to them. I think, you know, last night's sellout of the Barclays Center, what, 14,000? Something like that. They sold 14, for NXT. 000, yeah. And you can definitely tell. I love the lighting. I love how everything was black. It reminded me of some old school ECW stuff. You know, just all black. Everything was like, focused. The lights were focused in the ring. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, it was great, man. It was, uh, you know, I've said this. Ever since we started doing this show, multiple times I've said, NXT really has that ECW feel. Yeah, and last Just from night, the look and the talent. Yeah. Not so much the hardcore aspect, but I mean, that, you know, we could I could look past that. Uh, so the opening match of the night was a match to go ahead and get everybody hyped, in my opinion, which was Tyler Breeze versus Jushin Thunder Liger. Uh, what did you think of the match going in? I Before the match even okay, started, when you heard the, the match, announcement bef- that they were going to fight, what did you think? Before the match start, started... Based on WWE's track record with bringing people outside in, namely, I'm just going to use Sting versus Triple H as my example. Okay. The fact that they did not put Sting over in that match, I felt like this was going to be a match to build up Tyler Breeze. Mm -hmm. Um, not, Not that I feel like Tyler Breeze needs that much building, but it could continue momentum for him to be back in the title picture once whatever happens between Kevin Owens and Finn Balor is done. Right. You know, I, I expect him to be the next contender for the NXT belt. Okay. I don't know if he'll get it, probably eventually. Or, I mean, I could I could see that guy working great in WWE. He's got a good good shtick, you know, it's a good character. He could take him right over. So, I thought they were going to put him over. Because, I mean, Jushin Thunder has been around forever. The guy's in his 50s. See, you know, Justin Labar said the same thing on Twitter, and I, I tweeted him and I asked him, I said, are we sure it's the same guy under that mask? They well, they say it is. So as far as we know, yeah, they say it is. Because he, he was moving pretty good. I for saw a him. Uh, yeah, 
I, well, he's, you know, he's Japanese, so they age a lot better than us, you know, yeah. Americans do. Um, I saw him on Ring of Honor a few months back, and the guy's an amazing performer, man. He is, but here's my thing. WWE hyped him as, you know, being this legend and all these killer moves that he's got. The match was good, but nothing in the match was something that I just like, wow, I've seen everything before. Right. It's not a shot against uh, Liger. It's... It's a, it speaks to the credibility of his character mm-hmm. because everything you've seen that Liger did, um, Mer- American wrestlers have done a million times. But where do you think they got it from? Right. They got it from Liger. So it kind of took the... It rubbed off what could have been special, in my opinion, you know, for seeing a legend like Jushin Thunder So you wanted a little more. Yeah, and it's just like, well, everything he's done, I've seen, but only because it's been copied. That could also speak to his age. Very true. You know, but uh, there was some good spots. If it is the same man in that mask, yeah, and he is in his fifties, you know, you're not going to be putting yourself on the line as much as you would ten, oh, I years, agree. 15 years ago. I agree. Um, I am very surprised though that he got the win. So am I. I am very. surprised. I was shocked, in fact. So it's like, do you think they gave him the win because of who he is, or do you think maybe there's something there where because everybody was saying it's a one off. What do you do? You think maybe I there's think, a working relationship to bring him back? I think it could be. I think it might have just been out of respect. Um, WWE, as in the the more recent past, to me at least, seems like they're going out of their way to try and embrace the older stars and give them the uh, the credit that they're due for what they've done for the industry. Also, this one match now puts them in position to be included into the Hall of Fame. Right. You know, because they're, which in turn, it bothers me. You know, all I had to do is wrestle one match in the well, WWE. What, what and was that? Fame, well, but, I can't remember that guy, that other Japanese wrestler that just uh, got inducted this year. I, I know who you're talking that about. That never wrestled a match in WWE at all. Yeah. But I mean, hey, I, I get why they're doing it, which is cool. Um, it did make Tyler Breeze look that much more credible, mm-hmm. you know, that he can go toe to toe with him. That was, it, it was a good, solid opener. You know, it got you in the mood. You're like, you know what? It was cool. What's next? What else you got? I will say, I enjoyed Tyler Breeze's entrance. Yeah, Tyler the, Breeze's the models, was excellent. Yeah. The models with uh, their clothing to match architectural uh, history, like, you know, the the, the the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty. You know, I thought that was pretty cool. I liked, cool. Uh, I liked the fact that during the match, you know, Tyler Breeze is the thing where he props himself up on the ropes. Yeah, yeah. And he, like, lays back. I loved that at one point Liger did that to Did he? I missed yeah. that part. I remember he grabbed the selfie stick. Yeah, no, he and totally he, jumped up in the corner and nice, the Tyler Breeze. Nice. It was a very good match. Um, excellent way to open the show. Excellent, excellent. Uh, New York crowd, very rowdy. So mm-hmm. you, I don't know if you caught the uh, Full Sail Sucks chance. <laughs> no, I didn't catch yeah, those. They, I mean, that was pretty There wild. were a couple chants during the pay-per-view where I was like, what are they saying? Yeah, yeah. Some of them I made out. Uh, the first one during that match was uh, Full Sail Sucks. Nice. But it was to the tune of Full Sail Sucks. Nice. Full Sail Sucks, yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's Triple H should have been backstage smiling at that chant, showing that, you know what, NXT is such a credible brand now that we just sold out 14000 at the Barclays Center. Maybe we should tour a little bit more in the yeah, U.S. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and officially make it that third brand. But uh, also pretty cool where uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and Sean Walton is yeah. sitting at ringside. You know, NWO, you got to love it, dude. It was great, man. You got to the- love it. You know, and Hall, he Hall looked the, pretty good. He didn't look as, yeah, he as didn't worn look as bad. down as he usually has. You know, I, I'm sure staying with uh, with Paige, with Diamond Dallas, is doing a lot for him, man. Yeah. Doing that broga, which I know Paige hates that it's called that. I just think it's a funny word. I'm going to um, try that. I'm yeah, going to get it eventually. One of these days. I've been thinking about it myself. I could, I could use to build up Did you see my spring. Shark Tank? Your Shark Tank? Yeah. No. Did you see Diamond Dallas Paige on Shark Tank? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. I did. That I was did. good, man. I was kind of disappointed that they were like, eh. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, uh, so the winner of the match, Jushin Thunder Liger. Yeah, it was very surprising. Very surprising. Uh, the next match on the card, Blake and Murphy versus the Vaude Villains. This was the who gives a damn about this match, man. Thank you. I felt the exact same way. Like, I am so done with Blake and Murphy. I have not liked them at all. I, and... You know, and I don't want to discredit the guys as performers. They're good. They're a good tag team. They work well together. They work well off of each other. I just don't like them. Right. And even the the addition of Alexa Bliss 
doesn't save them for me. See, uh, well, I, I don't care. For, I didn't care for the match going in, but and uh, the I, other thing that disappointed me is that it was the Vaud villains in that title match, and not my boys and Zoe and Cass. Well, who knows? SummerSlams tonight. They're talking. There's a lot of talk about the uh, Los Matadores being, for some reason, pulled from the match with a surprise team being put in. Really? You never. That's that's what the uh, IWC has been buzzing about for the last two weeks now. That would be pretty heavy, man. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, I, I I didn't care for the match either, but I do like the Vaudevillains gimmick. I dude, I love their gimmick. It's a great gimmick, man. It's really good. You know the the strong man stuff, um, dude. With the addition of blue pants in their corner, you da, can't. Da, 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 that, that's the Price is Right theme, right? It totally okay. is. You can't tell me that with the addition of blue pants in their corner that they did not turn face last night. Yeah, totally, totally. Because they went into that match heel versus heel, pretty yeah. much. So the vaude villains are now faces. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, blue pants. She had, that is so ECW. It's not even funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, I personally, I've never seen like you said. I've never seen the appeal of Blake and Murphy. Um, the only thing I did enjoy seeing was Alexa Bliss in those booty shorts. My God, that girl's got a backside. Um, but speaking of those booty shorts, dude, and and, the, and their tights as well. What's up with the Iron Man gimmick? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't see how it translates to to their characters. Maybe they're just fans. Could be. Well, I, I mean, it was cool, but I don't get it. You know I'm, what I'm saying? I'm glad they don't have the belts anymore. I I just they they did nothing for me. Too. And they I'm were, not excited to see the rubber match either. They so. were cardboard. Yeah. That's how they were cookie cutter cardboards. Um, well, they have no. There's no personality, no character there. That's one of the sad things about wrestling is you can have all the talent in the world, man. You could be able to do the be- but if you don't have some mic skills, yeah. And at least a personality and a presence. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see them. I, I didn't you know, see that. I think that's why Bobby Lashley has suffered as a performer. Is he's just so he's dull, deadpan. He's very dull. Yeah. yeah. Um. Did you cast a chant during that match? Which one? The Blue Pants chant. I did. Blue Pants City. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um. So your winners and the new NXT Tag Champions were the Vaude Villains, who are, are apparently now face. Um. They also caught to another celebrity in the audience, first row. Grammy Award winning music Rick producer, Rick Rubin. Yeah. Who produced, I just realized, Eminem's last CD. Yeah. He, uh, him and Dr. Dre were listed as Man, executive producers. he's done a lot of great stuff. Yeah. A lot of great stuff. So I thought it was pretty cool he was sitting in the and, and a producer that that is genre spanning. I mean, the guy's done rap and he's done, you know, yeah, everything. metal. Everything. He's pretty much hit all of it. Like in some aspect. He was like, produced most of the early Slayer albums. Yeah. He produced the Beastie Boys, you know. Freaking Rick Rubin, man. He's the man. Moving into our third match. Ty Dillinger versus Apollo Crews. Now, going into this match, you already knew it was Apollo Crews' de- debut. You knew he was going over. Right. Especially since nobody, like, half the people don't even remember what Ty Dillinger looked like. Because I sure as hell didn't. I, Ty Dillinger annoys me. He's been popping up weeks building up to this okay. event. And I just, I don't like him at all. I care nothing for him. This was one of those matches... This was like, for me, I felt like it was back-to-back matches that I didn't care about. Like, I didn't care about the tag team matches because I don't like Blake and Murphy. And I pretty much felt going into that match, they were going to drop to the Vaude Villains. And I didn't care about Cruz versus Ty Dillinger. And then I saw the match. That dude is impressive. Ty Dillinger? Yes. Like, for a man of his size to pull off, like, some of those moves he was doing, Mm -hmm. it was impressive, man. No, you, know, you don't see too many two hundred sixty pounders, you know, with that move set. Did you think that Uhan or um, excuse me, not Uhan Nation, Apollo Cruz, because uh, you know Uhan Nation is who he used to be in the independent scene. Which uh, I don't the, the chance during that match where uh, uh, Uha something I don't remember exactly what it was, but he, rec- he like you could see it on his face when they started it that he was kind of giving that crowd that look like yeah you know, but uh, dude. He looks like a smaller, mashed-up version of Ezekiel Jackson meets Bobby Lashley. I can see that. I can totally see that. You know, that that's what I that's what I saw. Um, I liked how when he came out, he was just like, "Yeah, very energetic." He like, was like, totally. "That's a lot of people." Like you know, sometimes right. when the camera's right there, you can catch what they're saying before they actually start yeah. walking to the ring. Like range. he looked like someone that was genuinely impressed with like being there. But the presentation yeah. is like, like I, wow, look at my name up there. This like is I awesome. finally made it. Yeah, you know, like yeah, and you know that shows. That's that's genuine. That showed yeah. really well. 
Um, very agile, big man. Very, very agile. You know, um, it reminds me of certain other agile big men and, and thing. But I mean, he just didn't seem stiff. You know, he's one of those very agile big men who looked very fluid and very com- like he looks very comfortable in what he's doing. But at the same time, he still needs work because right before the finish. When he threw Ty Dillard into the ropes and he was going to grab him and, and press slam him, I saw, I don't know if you caught it, as he threw him in, he kind of did this, like he put his hands out for the, the slam as Ty Dillinger was just starting to come back. So it's like, dude, I saw that coming a mile away. Right. Like the timing aspect. He was a little too excited about it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, other than that, you know, his standing moonsault pretty, uh, finisher was pretty cool for a man his size. Hell Yes. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's a cool move in general. Anybody who can just do a standing backflip that way. But a 260 way, pound dude that can do it, exactly. that's what makes it impressive. Exactly. Um, but I was impressed. I no, was, absolutely. I was very impressed. Um, we knew that was going to be kind of a quick match. Yeah. Uh, Apollo Crews takes the win, of course. You know. Obviously. Um, look good. I, I like the fact that Ty Dillinger's character basically is a char- a, uh, what, what, an enhancement character. Because, you know, whoever he's facing is going to go over and look that right. much better. But when that happens, when Apollo Cruz goes over and looks that much more better, you have to give the tie, the credit to Ty Dillinger for making that happen. Yeah, totally. So props to uh, both those men actually in a very entertaining match, you yeah. know. Um, then we'll, after that, we cut backstage. William Regal announces the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Invitational starting September second, and uh, Regal hints that there's a lot of changes coming and there's a lot of surprises. What do you think that means? Maybe we're gonna get some talent from other places. Maybe there, maybe the, the, it seems to be a trend right now in wrestling overall to take belts and let them travel to other companies. Maybe we're gonna see some cross promotional things happening. I don't know. You don't think so? Maybe nah. I, I think it's because Vince still holds the reins. Well, maybe they're everything. bringing someone in. Could be the two guys I mentioned uh, earlier, but uh, we don't know. I, it's it is interesting to see what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Because uh, with NXT, everything they've said, you know, hey, we've got big changes, big surprises, they've all paid off. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, and then we cut to more front row guests, uh, the four Tough Enough finalists. Who cares? Nobody yeah, watches Tough Enough. I don't care. I don't care. Um, next match. Dude, total brawl. You knew it was a brawl going in. Straight up fight. Samoa Joe versus Baron Corbin. Totally. It was exactly what I thought it was going to be. Just a straight up brawl. Uh, both men delivered. I, I was very impressed with that match. Yeah. Uh, Baron Corbin's a big man. My problem with Baron Corbin is I think he needs a bigger pair of spandex because he's too tall where it looks like he's sagging skinny jeans. Yeah. Like, they just fit him too low. I, like, I know it takes... It's it's weird. It just it gives him a weird look. Like, he looks he, too stretched he out. He needs a more form-fitting... His pants look too small for his body. Like, yeah. the waist size of the back of his pants look like they're right above his crack. Like, dude, you need a bigger pair of pants, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't really think I paid all that much attention to it. It's just, it's really... He, I mean, because if you want to talk about, like, I don't really care for Samoa Joe's shorts things. They're kind of weird. Yeah, they're weird as well. They're weird. But that's the only reason I paid attention <laughs> the to The battle it, of the strange... The strange... <laughs> ring the strange, gear, yeah. yeah. Ring no, gear. no, no. The only reason is because Baron Corbin looks too tall. Right. You know, and it's just like, there's something... Like, he just looks stretched out. Um, I don't like what they're doing with his character. I like when he came out, he was silent. You know, he was just like, he came in, kicked ass, he left. Right. Now they're, it seems like they're giving him too much mic time. That's just... Like he's turning into an a-hole. Yeah, like, you know what? Kind of keep it silent again. Um, the uh, the programs he had with Rhino were good. Mm-hmm. Those were really good. Now, not to take away from this match, because this match was pretty good as well. Like I said, going into it, we knew what it was going to be. Um, but I honestly had no idea who they were going to put over in that one. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, it's Samoa Joe. You want to give him the big win. But you're building Baron Corbin up. So it's just like, I was 50-50 on that one. I really didn't know which way they were going. I felt like they were going to give it to Corbin just to put him over a little more. Um, Samoa Joe's been around a long time. They don't. I don't feel like they have as much invested in Samoa Joe as they do in Baron Corbin. Um, obviously, I was wrong. <laughs> um, I'm it's, glad they changed Samoa Joe's entrance music. Yeah. Yeah, because when he first came out and he had that menacing start and then it just turned into like some weird pop music right. I was like, what the hell that's not Samoa Joe doesn't fit they kept the weird they, they made it a little bit darker now it just it's it fit a little bit better um but uh anyways there was a lot of uh reversals in that match that really really just made it look good 
Um, like there's one where Joe turned a, a pin attempt into a half crab and then into a cross face. That was really cool. Um, and adding the extra uh, dash of greatness to it was him pulling the arm back and Baron Corbin finally having to use his foot to uh, grab the rope. That was really cool. Uh, it looked really painful as well, the way the sh- Baron's col- Baron Corbin's shoulder looked like it was about to pop out. That was It looked really good. Um, but what really didn't look good was the camera angle from when uh, Baron Corbin put Joe in that leg lock when he was yeah. sitting on the ground. That was a very bad camera angle because you couldn't really see what was going on. And it, from the angle that it showed us, it didn't look like he was doing anything. Like he was just holding his ankle. Right. Like a sitting, a sit-down ankle lock. Well, the ankle locks hurt, but we know they hurt more the higher you're elevated. So it really didn't look like anything. So that, that you know, a slight towards the cameraman there. Um, but it was a six, uh, Baron Corbin had a really sick choke slam on Joe, which turned into a pin, but then Joe reversed it into that sleeper, and that's how he won the match. I, I that was great. It just, their, what's the word, like, just their, their, their sequencing was very mm-hmm. on point, you know, so I give both men tons of credit Yeah, it was a good that. match. It was a good really match. Was. I was just surprised they gave it to Samoa Joe. Um, I really wouldn't mind seeing a rematch from them, actually. I wouldn't, I mean, the. There's, you know, room for it to happen for sure. Yeah. Um, so what do you think now of both characters coming out of this? What, what do you think is next for Joe and what do you think is next for Corbin? You know, I'm not sure. I am uh, I, I really thought they were going to put Corbin over. I also felt like because they're doing work with, uh, um, I can't remember his name now, Bull Dempsey. Yeah. They're doing work with his character. I kind of wonder if they weren't going to revisit that feud again. Because that was something that they built so much up in. Yeah. And it just kind of it fizzled. Just fizzed out. Man. Yeah. And that's when they started uh, trolling Dempsey and mm-hmm. making him the fat guy character. Yeah. And, uh, so now it kind of, uh, now that he dropped to Samoa, I mean, obviously we're going to get a rubber match. This will continue between them, I'm sure. So moving on, some more guests in the front row. We see Japanese wrestling superstar Kana. We see Ric Flair. And we see Sergeant Slaughter all in attendance, uh, along with Team Bad. Uh, very nice that they would constantly show all these guests sitting in the front mm-hmm. row. It makes it look, it made the the event itself feel like a big ticket thing. Like everybody had to be there. Right. You know. Too, um, so too like bad I, the majority of those guests were WWE employees. Yeah, it, but the, just the name. That, <laughs> I know, the, the, the I know. That the names hold. Um, but uh, Kana is, a, like I said, she's a, a world-renowned female wrestler from Japan. Uh, it was just announced that WWE indeed has signed her. So she will be joining NXT very soon. Uh, very easy on the eyes. <laughs> it's the first thing I noticed, man. Uh, well, then, anyways, it's the first thing you always notice. Duh. Booty shorts. Easy on the eyes. Yeah, man. I, I, like, to, I like to be able to like what I'm looking at. Hey, man. I could dig it. Um, could so dig after it. that, out comes Stephanie McMahon. Um, I have in my notes here. I says uh, Triple H chose right because uh, she uh, she looks kind of cold. <laughs> you know what I meant? No, I know what you're saying. Okay, but uh, you know, in recent years, like I sit back and I and I think to how Stephanie looked back when uh, she was still quote unquote young, right? And she did the angle with Undertaker and the mm-hmm. Ministry and all that stuff. And good God, was she an ugly, anno- annoying woman? The voice, but she's grown obviously into this very powerful woman and it shows yeah no absolutely you know, whether they're you know fake or not it just it, it yeah. well, trying to say this without sounding like a perf it just enhances her this is gonna you know i can't even say because I'll, I'll get backlash from it regardless so i'm just gonna skip that but uh, anyway she comes out and she introduces the co-main event of the night which is the nxt women's bout match number five on the card sasha banks versus bailey my opinion, I'm just gonna say it. Match of the night, dude. High five, brother. That no, no, that's straight up, dude. Match the, of the, the night. Honest that's, truth. That, that match, match stole the of show. the night. That match stole the show. Uh, me and Melissa sat here and watched it. Uh, she really doesn't. She doesn't follow wrestling as much as she used to, but she. We watched the the pay per view Taylor last night. Uh, well, not pay per view, but the event. And uh, she was like, "That was the best match I've seen all night." Yeah, and I was like, "Well, I was like, you know, you gotta wait till this last match to really put." But man, match match of the night. Yeah. Like sitting here today, I could say match of the night. Those those ladies, man, a lot of notes impressed, here on that one. impressed. Um, do you notice or have you noticed? Because I I certainly didn't. 
how the NXT ladies are referred to as women. Yeah. Whereas the main rosters are referred to as divas. I have. That's kind of weird. Isn't yeah, it? I don't understand that. I don't understand why it's in in on the main roster. It's the divas title, but in NXT, it's the NXT women's title. Right. I feel like uh, I don't know, man. To me, that whole divas thing the moniker divas has connotations that I just don't like. Like yeah. I don't like the the, the, the idea the of term a diva, diva it seems just, too too camera ish. Like yeah, it's, it's too uh, it's too much about appearance. It, way too much about appearance. And I, I feel like it's not as respectful as just calling it the women's title. Correct. Well, uh, some thoughts really quick here. Bailey, dude, I love Bailey. She's super fun. Um, she represents all the, to me at, at least, everything is pure and innocent about what wrestling is supposed to be. Yeah. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be, you know, like it's for all ages, but she really brings out that, you know, hey, dude, at the end of the day, we're having fun. Yeah, her character is something that is greatly lacking in wrestling women's wrestling, whole. period. Not just women, but I yeah, think no, in, in yeah, wrestling Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, she brings something different to the table, and, it, and I think that's good. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a, a bold statement here. I believe, I truly believe, she can be the female equivalent to John Cena if positioned the right way. I could totally see that. You know, because she's like, look at John Cena and all the work he does for the kids. Mm-hmm. Now imagine Bailey. Bailey's a... Just... Just put Bailey in that position. She's a hugger. She's definitely a hugger. Um, you know, now that you say, I got a inter- like so- quick side note. When I was listening to Wrestle Don- was Wrestle Zone Daily the other day, they had a, th- uh, a f- what they call Fun Friday. They do a contest and stuff, mm-hmm. and the contest was what is the funniest backstage segment to take place at SummerSlam? What do you think? The one that won was out of nowhere. Like you see Undertaker backstage, and out of nowhere. Bailey comes out and just gives a hug to the Undertaker, and he looks around like he's like, "Why is this? Sm- what am I? Do- Why is this child touching me? What do I do? Get it off me, dude!" Imagine that happening. That'd have been hilarious. So yeah, that's just because you brought up Bailey hugging. So that's that reminded me of that. But anyways, uh, moving on. It's no secret. I love, I love me some Sasha Banks. Don't roll your eyes. Yeah, I know. But, uh, so, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wanted Sasha to lose. But, you know, hey, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, I love uh, Bailey's arm tassels. She came out, she looked like Macho Man in that purple yeah. outfit. But she also had the polka dots, which is a, uh, a dedication to Dusty. Yeah, the, I, the, I that the was wristbands, awesome. yeah, totally. And she had the headband as well. Um, I, I love that. Uh, and with all the hype and the promo going into this match, it'd be hard to believe that Sasha retains, uh, that she was going to retain, especially with her being on the main roster Yeah, already. that's, I... When that match started, I told Melissa, I was like, I, and the funny thing is, is, apparently Melissa saw it online that Bailey had won. Yeah. But she didn't know what it was referring to, and she didn't know that Bailey was wrestling for the title. So she actually knew the outcome of the match, and I didn't, mm. which is a rare thing. So you didn't watch it so, as it aired. You watched it. I, while well, I probably watched it an hour after. I mean, it was okay. an hour after it started. Gotcha. Because all night I kept checking in, checking in, checking in. When's it going to start? And so at nine thirty, it did it because yeah. it wasn't from eight. 8 to about 10.30. Really? Because yeah. I was on at 8.30 and I was watching, uh, I don't remember what I watched. Yeah, I watched something at, else on there. started at 8. But the, the pre-show? <laughs> was it pre-show or was it the actual event? No, the actual event well, started at 8 o'clock. It wasn't, I don't know what the... 8 o'clock our time. So maybe it's an Xbox thing and Xbox Live just didn't have it updated when it was happening immediately. Right. But uh, maybe the Xbox app sucks. Um, as far as their entrances go, dude, I think Sasha Banks' entrance yesterday fit her very well. You know, getting driven out in the Escalade with Dude, security and everything. I still feel like Sasha Banks is a low rent Nikki Bella. No. Yes. That's no. how I feel about your girl. No. Are low you... rent Nikki Bella. No. I was like, that's, I told Melissa, I was like, Nikki Bella wouldn't have come out in the Escalade. No. Nah. <laughs> no, nah, she came out in John Cena's Lambo. <laughs> um, well, anyway, uh, like I said, the entrance fit her well, but. I love how the match started, dude. Bailey took it to her right away. Yeah. Just came out very aggressive out of the corner. Uh, it was a very back and forth match. Uh, it was, you know, for most of the match was that way. Uh, and it was kind of, I mean, you knew, you had this feeling that Bailey was going to win. But the way that Sasha kept coming back at her and putting her down and putting her down, you're like, man, there was maybe a point, she's going to retain. Yeah, there was a point in that match to where I, it was so good. 
I didn't care who was going to win. Right, yeah. Because totally. either way, no matter the outcome, both of those ladies had, in my eyes at least, attained such a high mark of credibility, dude. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, uh, you know, I, I've not been a, not really a Sasha Banks fan. Mm-hmm. So impressed with her last night. Yeah. Like, um, the both of them just took it to another level. A lot of great spots. You know, the double knees from the top rope mm-hmm. was very cool. Uh, it was a great spot. Um, like I said, with all the back and forth, it was hard to determine who's going to walk away as the winner. Because um, it's just, as far as the physicality was concerned, yeah. they both brought it. They brought it good. Um, Sasha went the, the super, what I call the super heel route. You know, she removed the protective wrapping around Bailey's injured hand and yeah. ripped off the polka dots and you know, I was like, oh, no. You know, like, it just, ugh, you know. The super, that's why I say it's like the super heel route. No, I, I, I can dig it. Um, well, well, by doing that, though, you know, okay, she she uh, exposes Bailey's weakness, so all of a sudden it makes Bailey the ultimate underdog. Like, oh, right. man, now she's really going after her. But that spot where she put Bailey's hand between the steel steps and the LED board, brutal. I honestly thought Bailey was going to get out of that. That, that looked really, really brutal. You know, and, uh, I so props to Bailey for really, really selling that. Um, I found myself, when that when that happened, dude, um, when she did, uh, when, when that happened, and Bailey was outside the ring, like, you know, just kind of like trying to get her senses back, and Sasha was in the ring, and Sasha ran and did that flip over the referee onto that the was- outside. Dude, I found myself that like was I stood up and I clapped. That was badass. I, I like you'd sworn I was actually there. I was just like so into it. You know, the last time I remember having any kind of reaction like that was when Undertaker lost. Uh, to, uh, he broke or excuse me when Lesnar broke the streak. You know, like but, uh, so that was that was such a great move that I needed the replay because just to confirm. That, that, she yeah, she saw it. that she didn't touch the ref to yeah. do it. No, she flew. Like, no assistance, Air Jordan, man. Air. Air Jordan out there. Totally. Right. Um, but, yeah, immediately uh, the This Is Awesome chance started and right after that. You know, and rightfully so. Now, see, that was a match where there were some chances that I was like, what was happening? Yeah, no, what I agree. They say? I agree, yeah. Like, I was like, what? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, you know, it was just a great sequence, though, with Sasha putting Bailey in the bank statement and then aggressively kicking her injured hand yeah. while she was still in the hold. I was like, holy crap. Um, as well as just for Bailey to reverse it on her, mm-hmm. you know, like holy moly, uh, Sasha shoving Bailey off from the top rope as Bailey attempted the Bailey to belly suplex, and the way Bailey landed just looked very brutal. yeah, it did. Like looked like she landed on the side of her face, her neck, and her shoulder. Like area. dude, such a such a great match. You know, watching that landing was just real, real. Like good. I feel like even with tonight's impending SummerSlam, that Monday. This match is still going to be one of the talked about matches of the week. Oh, of course. You know, the crazy finish with Bailey hitting her Bailey to belly. Say that five times. Yeah, Bailey to belly. Bailey to belly and finally winning Bailey to the belly, big belly, one. Bailey to belly, Bailey belly, 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 Like belly, I said, belly. it just, it just, <laughs> the, dude, this match was the match of the night. It was the match of the night. Um, it was. I love how WWE let Becky, Charlotte, and Sasha rep their four horsewomen crew. After the match, um, it gave me the feels, dude. It did. It, it did. gave me the feels. Um, and it did make. Didn't it make Sasha look like a face? It did. It so you really gotta did. wonder if she's gonna break away from Team Bad. I said that last night to Melissa. I said, "What if? What if this right here was like they look at it like tonight on SummerSlam, you know, or even on Raw or something, or you know, let's say they lose tonight's match. Uh huh. Tomorrow on Raw, they come out and they cut a promo, and Tamina and Naomi look at her and say, you know what? We could have had that match last night, but you got all soft on Saturday at Takeover. What your mind wasn't in it, or whatever, and they start to, from there. Right, because they could totally find someone else to replace her. Oh, of course. And fit that. And the, hell, if anyone, they could just bring Ariane back in. I mean, Cameron. Whatever her name is. Cameron. Yeah, totally. So you know, anyway, congrats to Bailey. Match of the night. Absolutely. Definite. Yeah. Well, well deserved. Yeah. Well deserved. Um. So then we cut away to another. Someone in the front row, and it's Seth Rollins uh, and his girlfriend, who I believe was the chick that was involved with him with that uh, naked photo scandal a couple months back. Okay, probably, of the year. probably. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. I yeah, do. so, because I reckon, like, the girl was all tattooed, and she's supposed to be a new NXT diva, but I think because of that coming out, they put the kibosh on that. Yeah. But, I, uh, before we move on from the from the Banks-Bailey match, I have to say, um, n- not only did... The performance of them elevate my feelings on both of them, specifically Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks coming back in the ring 
and like giving Bailey hug. Like not only did it give me the feels, but mad mad respect. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Mad respect. Absolutely. And you gotta wonder how much of that was Triple H saying, All right, you guys can go do that or them just saying, you know what, F that, we're going out there anyway. Just breaking K Fave. Yeah. Kinda a la the curtain call. Yeah. Totally. So, uh, and then finally, our main event of the night, Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor in a ladder match for the NXT title. Uh, what did you think going into it? Dude, Balor's entrance was awesome. The beginning of it. Yeah. Where he would, like, stand up, go back down, then he's over here. Yeah. He's over I, here. The multiple I, Balors. The multiple Balors. That, that was, was great, dude. That was good. But I noticed, because on NXT, doesn't he crawl all the way to the ring? He does. Yeah, this one, he's just like, no, I'm picking that belt up, and I'm just kind of walking. That's a long crawl. Yeah, it's, remember, we talked about this when we talked about entrances. Yeah. I said, what is he going to do when he's got to, to do a longer mm-hmm. walk? And, well, we got to see it. Yeah. Um, so, but going into it, though, honestly, did you think that Balor was going to retain? Or Absolutely. Or take it? Absolutely. In my eyes, there was no point in Owens taking that belt from him. There was photos that leaked online earlier in the week. People were saying that they're part of the upcoming NXT tapings where Owens was seen walking around with the NXT belt. So people were saying, well, maybe he'll take it back or maybe it's just a swerve to the internet. I'm sure it was just a swerve. Um, but, uh... Yeah, you got swerve. But, yeah. Which I watched the new one last night. So did I. But uh, going into it, man, it was hard to believe that uh, Owens would win the belt back after the reception and the praise and the promo that Balor has received since becoming champ, mm-hmm. you know. You know. And plus, Owens is on the main roster now. Unfortunately, so. as much as I thought that match was going to be really great, it was just good. Yeah. And I don't know if that's because Sasha <laughs> and Bailey's match was so friggin' epic. Right, right. That it just didn't come back. Like, to me, dude, this is the first time, for me at least, in wrestling history, where the ladies have totally outperformed the men. No, I, uh, yeah. Just totally. Yeah, totally. Agreed. Like, you could, kudos, <laughs> girl, because you smoked them, man. It was awesome. Um, like, I feel like a proud papa, dude, seeing these girls finally getting the respect. and They're finally getting it, man. I just hope they can keep it going. I hope so, too, man. Um... You gotta wonder though after that brutal match between because it was a pretty brutal match yeah. between Owens and Balor, how will Owens fare up yeah, that's, against Cesaro? That's what it, Melissa was like. Uh, she doesn't like Kevin Owens. She doesn't see the appeal of Kevin Owens. And I was like, you know, I was like, the guy's a performer. Um, what I am curious to see is tonight. I like Owens because he represents, in my opinion, guys like us. We're not in shape. Yeah, no, totally. He not. just put a t-shirt. He's got an attitude. And he's going out there and fight. Yeah. I like it. Um, so anyway, like I said, you got to wonder how he's going to do tonight. But going in, I like to point out that I'm a huge fan of not only both the competitors, but of their theme music as well. We both know that. Uh, and I totally dug the multiple battles at the beginning of the entrance. Like yeah, I said that was earlier. awesome. That was great. I like um, the fact that Kevin Owens was sitting back in the corner on a yes, chair. I was just, just totally say that. unimpressed, dude. He punked. I was like, I loved how Owens seems to have punked Corey Graves out of his chair. And Corey Graves is supposed to be some badass. You know, and then they cut... And I just see Corey Graves just standing there. And Kevin Owens is lounging. Like, yeah, you're a punk. You know, uh, that was great. Um, uh, but, yeah, some great spots. You know, Owens using the ladder against Balor to pin him against the outside of the ring looked really painful. Especially when he looked like he was going to hit him again with the ladder. But instead just gave him a right punch straight to the face. That looked painful. Yeah. That looked really, really painful. And there was that one where he was, uh, he got, I can't remember what happened, but he got taught. Owens got tossed onto the ladder and landed on the inside of it. Yes. Which I don't think I've ever seen that happen before right, in a ladder right. match. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of great spots. It was, a, it was a good match, man. But, you know, I I don't know. I guess I just expected more. Um, you know, during the outside scuffle, both men did a great job of making it all seem so brutal, brutally physical. Uh, you have to love those holy sh- crowd chants. Yeah. You know, whenever those come on, you know, especially from a hardcore crowd like New York. Uh you know, the back body drop by Balor to Owens onto the ladder looked really, really sick, especially with uh, Owens hitting his, his head on the back of the ladder. Yeah, totally. Um, Did the power bomb on yeah, the Yeah, I was outside. just going to say that Owens tries a corner power uh, corner cannonball, but instead, I don't know why I wrote cannonball. I guess I must have meant a power bomb. Uh, but instead, oh, no, no, the cannonball, yeah. When the ladder was positioned in the corner turn, yeah. and he runs and does that upside down, and he missed, and he just banged right into the ladder right after he Dude, just got when, back body dropped down. Yeah, it. when they were, 
And then later on, when they're on the ladder and they're trading blows, yeah, and Balor knocks him off, dude, that ladder hit, man. Yeah, he was, snapped looked, his neck back. Devastating, yes, man. Yes, it did. Um, I got that here too. Uh, it's just you know, Balor then performs a coup de gras and starts to ascend the ladder. The coup de gras off the rope, dude. I mean, off the top of that ladder. Owens comes wow. to yanks ba- Balor off the ladder into a power bomb, which was sick. Uh, Owens then tries to climb the ladder, but Finn lifts the uh, bottom of the opposite of the ladder, sending Owens crashing into the corner. After a little back and forth, Owens ends up hitting Balor with his pop-up power bomb into the ring apron. Yeah, that, that was, was sick. That was sick. Uh, Owens then starts to climb the ladder as Balor runs back in and tries to prevent Owens climbing. So Owens returns the favor by hitting a super kick, followed right after by another one. Uh, Owens then sets up two ladders, one belt under the uh, one belt, one under the belt, excuse me, and the other between like the bottom. Rope and then uh, the, the bottom, bottom of the ladder. Yeah, like right that's the, the that's there. the drop I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that drop was sick, dude. Um, and then like I said, you know, he has the intention of hitting a suplex on Balor, but Balor managed to fight out of it and send Owens falling back onto it with Owens' head snapping back pretty hard. But uh, he ends up. I I, I kind of missed it. I, I think I looked away. After that, how did Owens get into the position where like he did he just roll all the way to the other side of the ladder? To get himself in a position to get that coup de gras? I think so, because when, when Balor... Well, he did a nice bounce off that ladder. Yeah. And then Finn had to, like, rip the ladder out to try and, like, you know... Okay. I think uh, I think somewhere at that point he probably just rolled in a position. Right. But I'm kind of like... that. Every time I see that, man, that the coup de gras... I wonder, like, how is he just not devastating dudes with that? Yeah, really. Because it looks like a, a dangerous move to pull it off. Does. I mean, it's like a foot stomp onto someone's chest. Yeah. Um, so pretty much after he hits that very brutal-looking coup de gras, you know, all that's left is for him to climb up the ladder yeah. and grab the belt, which he does. Which seemed a little high, by the way. Eh. Was it not just a little bit higher than it normally is? Didn't, I didn't notice. I mean, I kept, I kept I, thinking... I think it might be the lighting. Yeah. I kept thinking at a point, I kept getting flashes of Edge uh, in, in a previous ladder match where he got a hold of the belt and then got knocked, the ladder got knocked down and he just hung. Yeah, yeah. The belt. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, all in all, you know, Balor goes up, grabs the belt, bam, that's your winner, he retains. Um, so, you know, that ends the show. I thought it was pretty good. It was a great match. Great match, yeah. but like you stated, definitely nothing on par with... Uh, Sasha and Bailey. Yeah, no, they, the, the ladies owned the night last night. So, definitely great. Um, NXT was, you know, you got to wonder, is are, are the main roster going to be able to step it up tonight with SummerSlam? They're going to have to. Yeah, they ain't no choice. They're going to have to. Well, speaking of SummerSlam, do you want to get into SummerSlam? Uh, if you want to do some quick picks, I mean, we're running on an hour right now. That's right, yeah. I mean, you know, it's our show. We can go as long as we want. That's true. Let's go. You got the match card? I don't. That's oh, why right. I told you to pull it up. Oh, my fault. Fool. Mr. All right, so I know all the matches by heart. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, kind of. There's like 10 matches, I think, tonight. There's a, there's a bunch of matches. There's, you know, there's quite a few matches, in my opinion, that are throwaways. Um, the uh, the IC title match, that's such a huge throwaway to me. Just a huge throwaway. Yeah. That, you know what? I don't know if they've announced what match is supposed to be on the pre-show. If they're, I think they're doing a pre-show tonight. But uh, if any, I, I you know what? There shouldn't be a match on the pre-show because the pay-per-view's already been extended to yeah. four hours. But if there has to be one and there has to be a match on that pre-show, I put the inner, as much as I hate to diminish what the Intercontinental title means, I say you put that match on a pre-show because that's a match nobody really wants to see. Okay, so I've got a list of the matches here. Go for I'm it. I'm not sure if they're in the correct order or not, but anyway. So the first match they've got in here is Dolph Ziggler versus Rusev. Um, you know, this match has built a lot of heat. I'm interested to see it. It's it's going to be Dolph's return to the ring since his, quote-unquote, you know, throat injury from Rusev. Um, I'm actually more interested to see interaction between Lana and... As is everyone else. And Silver Ray. I think it was a mistake, unless they're going to save it for the next pay-per-view, not to make this a mixed tag match. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised it wasn't made a mixed tag match. Um... I say, I say in this match, Rusev goes over. Yeah? Yeah. It makes too much sense for Ziggler to do it. It does make too much sense for Ziggler. I, I could see that. I want Ziggler to win, but I'm with you. They'll probably go with Rusev. Ziggler's already got a great fan following. Yeah, I think Rusev totally, needs it. Totally. Rusev, Rusev needs this win. Because um, he hasn't had a win. 
He hasn't even had a big feud since WrestleMania against Cena. So this would that's I feel like that's a throwaway match that was kind of like I mean it was it was quickly thrown in there, I felt like. The Rusev Ziggler? Yeah, the Rusev Ziggler. Um this is a, another throwaway match, I feel like. So this is the same. It's now we're we are the second match on the card and it already feels like a, a toss to me. And that's Sheamus versus Randy Orton. That should be on the uh the, that should be the opening match. Just to get it out of the yeah. way. Yeah. I don't say put it on the pre-show because of the pedigree that these two competitors have. Yeah, but not that's to gotta be on the... either one of them. It just seemed like thrown together. I remember night. when people used to say that Divas matches were the bathroom break matches. Uh, that's funny. People were people were saying where's going to be the bathroom break tonight. Orton versus this Sheamus. This is going to be it. Yeah. And here's 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 my thing. This match only means one thing. We need to pay attention to whether Sheamus wins or loses. Yeah. If he wins, don't expect them to cash in. If he loses, there's a very strong chance he might. Mm-hmm. Especially if Cena goes over and Cena takes both belts, I can see Sheamus cashing in and taking that belt. Only because, bam, you gave Cena the belt, he's now 16-time champion, right. let's have Sheamus take it right from him. You know, no, so, absolutely, that would that makes sense. So next time we've got, uh, so who would you pick for that then? You don't really care? Because honestly, I don't care. I, I really don't care. I want to see more, RKO over nowhere, that's, that's all yeah, I want. It's more of... Does Sheamus win? Yes or no? It's yeah. not. Do who do we want to win? It's just does he win? Right. You know, because Orton, which changes the outcome for later. It what, might. You, it yeah. might. So then you got Cesaro versus Kevin Owens, dude. That's a tough pick. Cesaro has so stepped. I, I feel like he's grabbed the brass ever ring. since that Stone Cold <laughs> podcast when McMahon specifically, I felt like specifically called Cesaro out. Yeah, he did. That he has stepped up. Yeah, and I feel like the fans, the universe has gotten behind Cesaro, even with the the C section signs. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know it would be good to give it to Cesaro to give him a push. Kevin Owens is fresh, you know, but I don't see them not giving. See it that good. that's that's a fifty fifty man. Like, you I know, mean, you, he lost Cesaro last night, right now. So. Yeah, Cesaro right now needs the win. To continue the momentum yeah. he's building, especially with the C section sign, the Cesaro section signs, which WWE is acknowledging, you know that they're not gonna just let it sit when you have your announcers acknowledge it. Yeah, totally. Once they incorporate it onto TV, yeah. in the sense that they're controlling it. Now, see, here's here's a good thing. Here's a perfect way for them to let Cesaro get over on Owens, and it not be detrimental to Owens. Is that Owens had an epic ladder? Well, not epic. But he had a match tonight a before, a ladder match. match, a brutal match. See, the problem with that, though, is you're continuing to bury Owens. And ever since his feud with Cena, that's what's been happening. Is nobody, It's like nobody cares about Owens. And from what I understand backstage, Owens does not have a lot of fans in terms of, not personality, but just what they feel he can bring to the table. You know, so, I mean, it sucks because we all know the guy's talented. Yeah. But right now, Cesaro's getting that push. So, in this match, I'm going to have to go ahead and say Cesaro gets yeah, the win. I, I would think so, too. It makes the most sense to me. You remember? I, no, I don't think you watched TNA back then when they had the, the stable main event Mafia. And it no. was like Kurt Angle, Sting, Booker T. Uh, I think AJ Styles was a part of it. And they all came out, kind of like a Four Horsemen thing, but they all came out in suits. And they had like Mafia music playing. It was really weird. I think a stable similar like to that needs da, to be. Da, 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 but, like yeah, some almost like, music? yeah, almost like the Godfather music. You know, and Sting would come out, but Sting wouldn't. It was Steve Borden. It wasn't even Sting in face paint. Oh, really? Where Steve Borden would come out with the suit and tie and stuff, and they would just carry their championships. Wow. It was very four horsemen ish. Um, I believe a stable similar to that needs to be incorporated into the WWE with Cesaro part of it. Because when Cesaro came out a couple weeks ago in that business suit, dude, he looked like a million dollars. Right. He looked like a champion. I don't care what anybody says. Cesaro needs a belt, and he needs that push. Totally. Just my two cents. So, next up, the match we have been waiting for. Not only as fans of wrestling, but as fans of comic books. Green Arrow and the Red Arrow versus Stardust. And the Cosmic and the Cosmic King, King, King. Which I like a little bit more. I like, I like the, the Cosmic, Cosmic King, King angle. It's um, cool. Dude, there's no way in hell Mel does not go over. Yeah, no way. No now, way. here's the question. Who gets the pinfall? I honestly believe it's going to be Stephen Amell with the pinfall over Stardust. You think so? I, believe I could see that, man. With, I could see that. With, uh, right after Neville hits the red arrow. I don't know who he's going to hit the red arrow on, but I could see it where 
maybe Barrett, like it becomes one of those chaotic things where all four men are in the ring. Barrett gets knocked down. Neville hits the red arrow on the King Barrett. Stardust is distracted by what's going on. Amel comes in with a surprise move or a roll up or whatever, and he gets the win over Stardust. Now, did you hear the rumor that uh, Amel teased that tonight would be the uh, first look at the new Green Arrow costume? Yeah, he's been messing around on Facebook all week, showing images, saying that uh, he's pretty much going to be wearing an outfit very, very, almost, almost similar to what you'll be seeing on season four. They didn't say it was going to be the exact one, but they said very similar yeah. to it. Oh, man. man, I'm excited for that one. I'm not going to lie, dude. That's like, out of all the matches we've listed, that's the one I'm like looking forward to. Oh, yeah. You know? And like, like I hope people have said, solid 10 to 15 uh, minutes. usually these matches with celebrities and these demon matches would be the bathroom breaks. Yeah, no, In my opinion, time. these are the highlights of SummerSlam. Yes. These are the two matches I'm most looking forward to. Moving on to the next match, something I'm not looking forward to because I feel like they've crammed it down our throat the last month and a half. Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper. I am looking forward to that. Are you really? Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Why it's going over. You know why? Because I feel that there's going to be a third member tonight. Even yeah. if it's a return of Eric Rowan, there's going to be a third member that helps them out. It would, it would be just... I don't I don't know. Maybe it's even... People are talking about Dean Ambrose turning on Roman Dude, Reigns. I don't see that happening. I would prefer Roman Reigns turning to on turn Dean, on yeah. Dean Ambrose. People were saying that it's not going to work because Roman Reigns will drag down the weight of what Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family represent. I say you leave him as a silent hitman, kind of like Luke Harper. Luke Harper and Roman Reigns become a tag team. You get Roman Reigns going down this really dark path because The Rock is going to be at WrestleMania 32, but we don't know what he's doing. Imagine he has a match with um, with his cousin to put Roman Reigns over with the fans finally. The Rock comes into it. He looks. He comes back, and his main reason is, Roman, you know, what the hell happened to you? You know, you were on this great path. Came on this dark side, and it's basically a road to redemption for Roman Reigns to come back, and then the fans embrace him to come back and be a face again, and that ends at WrestleMania. That, or it ends with a WrestleMania match between Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. You know, whatever happens, it's Roman Reigns coming back at WrestleMania and redeeming himself, or whatever have you. I don't feel like I, I'm really hoping for. Bo Dallas. Yes, I would love that. Dude, you imagine Bo Dallas being the recruiter for the Wyatt family? He walks out with what looks like a Bible, and he's just preaching the word of Bray Wyatt. And how you have to believe. Yeah, exactly. They, they would work well together. They, they, they really would, would. They would work well together. You know? There's uh, got to be. I say the Wyatts go over in this one. I, you know, I don't care. So, whoever could go over, doesn't make a difference to me. Wyatt's got to go over. Um, you know what? For... For the purposes of the character, you're right. I, I do feel like the Wyatts need to go over. Uh, on to the second match. Totally looking forward to. The Divas Revolution. The triple. Comes to a head. The elimination match. match. It's You know it's elimination by team. Oh, is it elimination See, by the, team? That's been the confusion online all week on other wrestling podcasts was they weren't sure if it was single competitor elimination uh -huh. or by team. So, it's no, if Sasha gets pinned, team bad is all eliminated. You know? Right. Um, I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, I say personally, Team Bella, the first one that gets eliminated. I they they've so? got to. They have to. Because they're already established. The the point is to spotlight your new talent. So why not have team uh P C B versus Team Bad in the finals? Get the Bellas out of there. Well then if that's the way it plays, then P C B gets it. You think so? Just because it's more new talent. True. Because I mean Tamina pff, she looks like the Bride of Frankenstein with that hairdo. She does. Weird. She looks... She That girl looked like her daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and she's very imposing, dude. Yeah. Like, I feel like they could do more with her than they do. Yeah. Oh, totally. Um, But, yeah, she's a, she's well-established. Naomi is well-established. The other one that's not is Sasha Banks. Right. And, like you said, it would play good... Or it, would, it would play well into the future... For her to be the one to lose that match for them. Yeah. And get expelled from Team Bad. Yeah. And then eventually when Bailey comes over, man, I would love nothing to see the four horse women. Yeah. I told Melissa, I'm like, that would just be bad ass on you know so what, many though? levels, dude. I, I can't see them coming out just in the way they come out. They've got to come out looking professional. Yeah. You know, they've got to come out matching. They've got to come out all on their business. You know, and then from there, you have where you build Charlotte to be their version of Ronda Rousey, which we've discussed before. You know, and she leaves the four horsewomen and becomes this big entity all her own. 
So, I mean, if, if the Bellows aren't going to take it, I I really, I, like I said, really, PCB needs it. Yeah. PCB needs the win. Do they really need it? I mean, they're so over yeah, with exactly, the fans. Exactly. That, uh, you know, maybe it would be good for Team Bad to get the win. Mm-hmm. Or for maybe it's good, for, maybe it would be good for the Bellas to establish their dominance. Nah. They don't need it. You know? Because Nikki Bella's getting there, man. It's going to be soon. She's going to have surpassed. AJ. Well, who do you think is going to take that belt from her? Man, I don't know. Because there's so much. There's so many. It's the, it's the talent pool in the Divas division has The grown most logical choice is so obviously much. Charlotte. I, I would think so. But Sasha Banks has a pinfall victory over Brie mm-hmm. and Nikki. She made them both tap out. I was actually kind of wondering if we would... I was really hoping to, at some point, get to see a, a Bella on Bella match for that belt. Meh. And it seems like they kind of buried that angle from ever happening. Right. When it was really prevalent at the time and it's just been completely buried. But I mean, you know, either way, whoever wins this match, this will be one of the highlights of of SummerSlam, in my opinion. I agree. Moving on. Fatal (laughs) Fatal 4-Way tag match. Oh. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, neither do I. This is the problem, man. So many, so many great tag teams in and on the or so many great tag teams on the main roster, I don't give two about anybody. Primetime players, yeah, it's great. Yeah, whatever. Uh, New Day, uh, Lucha Dragons, I don't care about. They're entertaining. Los, Los Matadors, I just don't care about. I'm tired of the back and forth between the New Day and the primetime players. Um, the primetime players are over to the point now where they don't really need the belts you're, anymore. You're tired of the black on black crime? Nah, not even. It's just, it, this, the story's getting old. You know, like yeah, I said, they're, they're so over. Of shut up. They're so <laughs> over that they don't need the belts. Um, I say if you want to put some energy in it, you give it to the Lucid Dragons. Um, I feel that the Matadoras should be taken out of the match and we get the debuts of Enzo and Big Cass on the main roster. And if they debut, they take the belts. There's no way that they're going to debut and not take the belts. That would be... Dude, they're in Brooklyn. So awesome. So awesome. You know? They've, they've got to. Like, There's so much so buzz awesome. going about it right now. It, it's so just awesome. the perfect time to introduce them. Hell, even if they just show up backstage segment, you know, introduce them somehow, some way. Yeah, it's just, it's a shame that, like... The Ascension has not played into the tag team scene at all. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty at bad. At all. Like, now that Blake and Murphy just lost to the belts in NXT, they'll eventually make their way to the main roster. What are they going to do with those guys? Are they just going to bury them? Yeah, I don't know. But, like, you know, this is a match. This is a match we should care about. But because of who it's comprised of, you just don't. Correct. You what know? else we got? And then you've got the Internet Intercontinental Championship throw. Who cares? Don't care. Ryback's, Ryback's gonna retain. It. Yeah. It's good. What's the point of giving it to Big Show or Miz? There's yeah. no point. Pointless match. Then you've got the last match. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing this. Um, the I guess the the first main event. John Cena versus Seth Rollins. Yes. Title for title. Winner takes all. Yeah. You know what? I am very interested to see how this plays out. I am. You know, does does Rollins take both belts? I mean, there's so many ways you can go with it. I'm amazed to see John Cena getting back in the ring after getting his nose blown up two weeks ago. Yeah. But, I mean, like I said, there's so many ways. Like we discussed earlier, if Sheamus loses that match, there's a good chance he'll cash in on this. But who does he cash in against? Yeah, so that's the thing. If Sheamus loses this match, does... If Sheamus loses, does Rollins drop the belt... To Cena. To Cena and then just back. for Cena to drop it to Sheamus. Right. Or does... Do they swerve us? And Rollins takes both, and Sheamus cashes in on Rollins. And then Rollins just has the U.S. belt. Exactly. You know, because Cena doesn't need a belt. Yeah, no. Does Kane interfere in the match because of Rollins kicking him after they destroyed Kane's leg, remember? And do we see the return, which they're really li- r- implying, the masked Kane? Which I, Kane just can go sit down regardless. Yeah, totally. But do we see that in the play? There's so many factors you know, uh, that that's that's definitely one that where the finish is going to be the most look. That one and then the actual main event are the two yeah. that the finishes are just going to be like, you know, fans are just going to be like, what? what yeah, I really are? feel like coming coming out of this SummerSlam, the talked about matches will be the Divas Revolution match, John Cena Rollins, 
and the next one, which is Taker Lesnar. So how do you do Taker Lesnar? B- b- before we even get to that, oh okay, so, Rollins or Cena? Who who do you want? In all honesty, Cena get, Cena would make more sense, but I prefer Rollins to have the belt because he's been on such a great build, and just now recently is he actually starting to come out and break away from the authority. Yeah. And be his own thing. Um, he does need to work on his promos a little bit more because it takes him a good ten to twenty minutes just to deliver a two minute point. Excuse me, a two minute point. But I believe I do. Is believe, that really him though? Uh, and not just you know. I, I do believe Rollins is the future. I, for the sake of making John Cena the sixteen time and letting him, would that tire surpass Flair? That would tie Flair. I. You know, part of me wants to see him get that accolade. What if Flair comes out and prevents Cena from winning because he doesn't want Cena to tie up with him? And also because, you know, Seth Rollins' mentor was exactly. his protege. Exactly. That would, man, that would wow. be hot. Man. I'd like yeah. that. Um, either way, man, this is going to be a good match. Uh, I don't really, you know, either way, I'm happy with it. If John Cena, good for Cena. If Rollins, it took, I really have come to embrace Rollins. I like him a lot. But the match that I'm not really sure I care about too much, the main event. Really? Brock Lesnar versus Cena. I'm more interested to see how it, how it plays out at the end. Like, Brock Lesnar has been so imposing and devastating to his opponents that I, man, because of The Undertaker's last few performances at WrestleMania... Which was Lesnar and then uh, Bray Wyatt. And the, well, and even further back, CM Punk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that uh, it's just, there's something. I mean, the, the guy's gotten old, man. You yeah, know, it you, you can't blame him. It happens to us all. It's I'm not trying to discredit anything the man has ever done, but does Taker have the ability to, to carry this match? And if not, does Brock have the ability to carry this match and make it look good? Right. Um, I would say, yeah, obviously Undertaker's not going to visit Suplex City as often yeah. as uh, as other people have. But I still think it's going to be a very brutal match. Taker goes into it as the heel. I don't care what anybody says. Everything he's done to Lesnar so far has been very heel tactic mm-hmm. with sneaking up on him and giving him the low blows and everything. So I honestly feel... That Lesnar's got to go over in this. Yeah. It makes no sense for Taker to go over it. It makes no sense for Taker to go over um, this. Now does... Unless some weird angle comes in where someone gets involved. I was just going to say... To set up that, a does, WrestleMania match. Does, anything, does anybody get involved? Because, um, again, so many factors play into it. But uh, also is that Monday Night on Raw, WWE is planning a big Monday Night Raw angle the way how they do the night after WrestleMania, how everybody's like, you have to watch Raw. Because right. you know something's going to happen. That's what they're. That's how they're playing up this Monday Night Raw. It's going to be the start of a whole new thing. My question is, you know, hey, he was in Chicago yesterday. They're saying he's not in New York because he flew from New York to Chicago to be at Wizard World. But hey, that was yesterday afternoon. There's plenty of time to fly back to New York. Does Sting get involved, or do they hold him off for Monday Night? I don't know, man. That's a good question. Here's my thing. Would you rather watch Undertaker Sting at WrestleMania? Or would you would you mind Undertaker Sting at Survivor Series, and then you have Undertaker? I ain't gonna lie. You know what match I would like to watch? If this is Undertaker's last last WrestleMania, yeah, I would not mind Undertaker Sting at Survivor Series if they hype it up enough because it finally gives credibility to what Survivor Series used to be. And at WrestleMania, I would definitely like to watch Undertaker versus John Cena. That's a match that needs to happen. John Cena cannot cement his legacy if he does not fight The Undertaker. My opinion. He needs that match. I'm surprised he's never fought The Undertaker before. Especially at a WrestleMania, though. Yeah. It, the show of shows. Yeah. And Cena's their guy. What sense does it make not to have him okay. fight Undertaker? So if, the, if, the, if, if Sting does play into this, and Sting somehow gets involved, and then it sets up a feud for Sting and Undertaker Survivor Series, would you have issue if... Uh, Taker lost to Sting only to rubber match to WrestleMania for a rematch. Mm, kind of, because then where does that leave Cena? Especially if this is Taker's last WrestleMania. 
Like, that's just a match I feel that has to happen. You know? Regardless. Or, hell, I'll even be okay if it was a rubber match at Royal Rumble. Yeah. And you still give me Taker Cena at WrestleMania. Or... You do you reverse it and you give me a rubber match of Sting Taker at WrestleMania, but you give me Cena Undertaker at Royal Rumble. Regardless, you got to give me Cena Undertaker. And you got to figure out how that's gonna. Sorry, I had to stretch there. You got to <laughs> figure out how that's gonna work though. How's that gonna play into you know? Right. Um, honestly, like you said, I feel like Brock needs this to go over because there's no point in Undertaker going over unless they're gonna rubber match it. You know, unless this isn't going to be the first of a series of matches. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, even then, what happens when Lesnar wins? Does he go back after Rollins? See, that's another reason why I feel Rollins needs to retain. Because if Brock goes over, what's next for Brock? He's got yeah. to go back against Rollins and handle business. Because that was never finished. Yeah, no, totally. You know? Totally. Because I doubt he's going to want to go after Rollins if Rollins isn't holding that belt. But then at the same point, couldn't we get another John Cena-Brock match? Cause Do we want one? Is that don't you feel like that was kind of unfinished? No, you don't. Because I feel like man, Cena took an ass whooping at SummerSlam, right? Cena took an ass whooping, and then Cena came back only to get screwed. Yeah, no, I think that's done. Because what are they gonna do? Have Cena? What's the point? Is Cena gonna go over Lesnar? I don't see that. I wouldn't see that. It would be an opportunity to give. I think Lesnar the belt back ends up. Pinning Lesnar is going to be a made man. Yeah. And they've really got to play their cards for that. So I don't think anybody goes over Lesnar until WWE decides who that made man is going to be. It could be Roman Reigns. It could. It damn well could be. If It could have been had the fans been behind him this year. But if they weren't Well, I feel like him, the fans are behind him now, though. Yeah, now because they've decided to play him, let him give him more time to grow as that character instead of forcing Well, you him never else. know, man. That could have that could have been a swerve for us, too. Yeah. That could have been their intentions the whole time. So we're going to fake everybody out, think this is what we're going to do, and we're going to put Rollins in there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this should be a good pay-per-view. Second best pay-per-view of the year for WWE, in my opinion. You think so? Second best? Well, we best? haven't seen it. I think the second best is always Royal Rumble. Oh, well, we haven't seen that yet. Right. I'm saying at this point, gotcha. when tonight's over... I feel like this should be the second best. Right. And then we'll see. When the Rumble comes, we'll talk about that. Oh, of course. But uh, this was an extra special, extra sized episode. We had a lot to talk about this week. Yeah. Um, I'll actually be posting this hell soon. Oh, man. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. Because as we're doing this, I, I just posted online that uh, we're sp- posting this episode in a few hours. And I'm scrolling. All the caption says is, here we go. And it's Stephen Amell sitting in uh, on the floor seats at the Barclays Center. Check that out. Nice. Dude, you're getting goose. I, I got goosebumps. I'm excited, I, man. I'm, I'm super hyped for this I'm match, excited. man. I can't wait. Tonight, SummerSlam is going to be awesome. And I can't remember the last time I said that about a SummerSlam. Yeah. No, it's true, man. You know. Usually, that's reserved for, for WrestleMania. Right. You know, this the kind of hype that they're bringing to the SummerSlam, it feels almost like a WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Just not as on as grand of a scale. The one thing I do have to disagree with is Brock, or excuse me, Paul Heyman hyping this as the match that was too big for WrestleMania. Nothing is supposed to be bigger from Res- than WrestleMania. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, eh. But I get it. But uh, that's all we got for this week, ladies and gents. Next week we'll hit you guys back with our SummerSlam review as well as our Monday Night Raw review. Should be fun, and of course we'll. Th- some uh, sprinkle some tidbits of uh, whatever news comes our way this week. Totally. So uh, stay tuned. We hope you enjoy the special Sunday edition of the Lockup, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday where we where uh, to say we talk the spinner rack, where we bring you the spinner rack. Yeah. So that's all, folks. Peace.